Hi, and welcome to the Aquascaping Video Guide Series. Now, this is a series of videos on aquascaping, but there's a couple things that we have to get out of the way and explain first. First, what you're going to see here is an introduction to aquascaping. I'm going to go through a lot of things about stuff that you should learn and stuff like that to become a better aquascaper. Now, what I did was take the table of contents to the series and created a presentation out of it and did it in my local fish club and I figured why not just use the same footage so we could kill two birds with one stone. So in this video we're going to be using a lot of materials. Most of that I got permission for using it and a couple are from you know common um, creative share licenses. So if you want to know about the credits or any of the videos you see here or who done what Aquascape, all the credits down below in the video description. So remember, this video is the table of contents for this series, so we will glance over subjects. And one final thing is that I made a couple of videos before I made this video on aquascaping. Those belong in this series. So it's a little kind of out of order, but hopefully you'll join me on this journey as I finish up these videos in this series. Because as making a, of this video, they're not all completed yet. So it's going to have to go over time because we're going to go over tons of subject. And I really want to really dive into it so that it's going to be like a video per subject kind of thing. Anyways, here we go. Enjoy. What is aquascaping? Hopefully this works. There you go. It does work. Uh, Wikipedia says um, aquascaping is the craft of arranging aquatic plants as well as rocks, stones, cave work, or driftwood in an aesthetic, pleasing manner with an aquarium in effect gardening underwater. But really, seriously, what is aquascaping? To me, aquascaping is a release, a way to create something out of nothing, to craft a story from the ashes of absence, to leave the shell of insignificance and soar among the cosmos. Unfortunately, that might be a little too zen for you, so we'll just go back to the Wikipedia definition. Okay, why do we aquascape? Now, I'm just wondering, because I just wanted to gather the data so I went ahead and messaged all thousand of my friends on Facebook uh, and asked them why do they aquascape so in this uber um, poll basically the super poll eight people replied five people said it was a cool thing to do two people tried to sell me sunglasses and one person was a Russian model named Natasha who thought it was cute and for five grand said she'll fly down the state and marry me. Uh, of course, this is a fake poll. That's actually Anna Kendrick, and I wish she would message me and say I was cute and wanted to marry me. Okay, reasons people aquascape. A lot of people say the challenge. Challenge aquascape is something fun to do. It's uh, fun to build something out of nothing. It's a hobby within itself. It's relaxing. One person told me that he's a vet. And he says to help with his PTSD, it's actually relaxing for him to do aquascaping. It helps him um, just relax and have, have a better life, I guess. A lot of people use it to tell a story, to unleash their creativity. And a lot of it is about learning how plants grow, how to uh, build an, a great aquascape. All right, getting into aquascaping. How do you get into aquascaping? Imagination is more important than knowledge, for knowledge is limited, whereas imagination embraces the entire world, stimulating progress, giving birth to evolution. This is by Albert Einstein. That's one of my favorite quotes. You start aquascaping by imagining, about, cre about creating. You know, you have a vision in your mind, and you go for it. Get that inspiration to create. Have a vision. You know, picture something and then do that something. Observe everything around you every day because you'll be able to find some kind of inspiration, something to do in a tank. Okay, observe nature. Nature is the best way to figure out how rocks move or how they're placed, how driftwood falls into the uh, riverbed or stuff like that. You go to browse your local fish store, like CK Fish World store, with their aquascaping aisle, which is very inspiring. Watch YouTube of other aquascapers. There's tons of aquascapers out there that shares um, what they do on YouTube, and it's a great way to just get inspired by that. Join a social media group or join a club like this one. Um, 
meet a lot of people you talk to them you get a lot of ideas and uh, a lot of them like for me when I talk to them it just inspires me to try something new uh, you could even get stuff from movies and TV uh, inspiration there so some of the YouTube aquascapers I watch because I get asked this a lot is uh, you can check this out is aqua pros George Farmer he's really good aqua pros actually breaks down a lot of scientific explanation about growing plants and stuff Dennis Wong is another one that is really good at explaining the scientific version of it so if you like the scientific techie stuff he's another good uh, channel to watch pet tech is another one who not more is more into creating the aquascape and you get a lot of inspiration from him the green machine is just completely awesome he does extremely awesome aquascaping and you get a lot of inspiration if you haven't already check out the aqua this ada channel obviously you know hopefully know who ada is there's a tons of stuff you can watch on that channel that will definitely give you a lot of ideas the planet tank is another channel he just started but he does some really great aquascaping and something really cool to watch uh, next one is a clip from a YouTube co channel called simply Beta. she made this aquascape based on the movie Lord of the Rings this is her Hobbit aquascape okay this is just some really crazy inspiration just from a movie itself now uh, aqua pros Mike from aqua pros did another aquascape that he got an idea inspiration from um, Avatar. I created this whole really cool Avatar aquascape and an effect and stuff like that. Now, the next thing we were talking about is to learn and understand the rules, uh, the techniques, and stuff like that. So, one of my favorite sayings is learn the rules so you can learn how to break them because that's the purpose of learning the rules is how to break them in aquascape to create a new style, new inspiration invoke a certain emotion learn the aquascaping styles okay, there's a few popular ones like the Dutch style the nature style the Uwe Gumi style and there are, a lot of these are really connected mainly from the ADA um, Amano's um, techniques the jungle style biotopes paludariums all of them have their own unique way of doing things and you can learn a lot from them Dutch style is all about plants very little hardscape other than plants doing a Dutch style will teach you a lot of things about how plants grow how to trim them make them work and grow a certain way and how to mix certain colors and stuff to create this really gorgeous uh, aquascape the nature style is basically you're replicating something from nature mountains uh, streams or whatever and this is a little more easier than Dutch because it's a little more less technical more creative the Iwigumi style is kind of a extension from the nature style Iwigumi style is about uh, using the techniques of, with stone and how to make it look serene and everything in a tank this is a very good um, style to learn just to learn how to grow carpet honestly because you're gonna grow a lot of carpet in this kind of style the jungle style is a lot more what a lot of people do. You just stick the plants in and let them grow. Okay, and you learn a lot about just how plants grow, how they work together, how the colors mix together. And uh, you create this jungle looking style. Biotopes is another great um, aquascaping effect to get into as you're trying to replicate nature itself. You know, from some kind of, a, of environment, the Amazon or what have you. You'll learn what kind of plants grow at that certain area that geographic area how plants or how the riverbed would usually look and what type of fish goes with that biotope and usually choose the fish based on that type biotope but it's a good way to learn the more practical rules of aquascaping when you go with the biotope and then you have paludarian paludarian is another great thing to try because you'll learn a lot about how plants grow immersed Okay, how they grow outside and you'll notice that some plants that can grow both immersed and submersed grow differently depending on whether they're grown under the water or out of water all right how do plants grow learn about how plants grow when you do an aquascape you have to understand how plants grow 
I break them down in three factors. The natural factor. I learn and understand photosynthesis. This is one of the things that, as um, as I was doing YouTube videos, uh, that I realized is a lot of people really don't know how photosynthesis works. Okay, just at least learn the basics and understand that what you're feeding them, lighting, CO2, nutrients, or whatever, has a lot to do how they grow, and you learn that by learning what photosynthesis is. I understand the natural growth of the plant itself, so you'll know exactly how it looks when it's grow full grown in your aquascape, so you know basically where to put it, or if it will fit with your aquascape. That basically leads to the overall shape of the leaves of, of the plant itself. Learn the size and types of leaves, you'll learn how that how they grow with CO2, uh, and then learn how to propagate. Propagating will give you uh, obviously free plants, but there are some plants that actually there's a trick to it where if the leaves are dying, pull it out. You save a lot of energy so that the plant itself can grow more. Alright, the artificial factors. Obviously, you know, lighting CO2 nutrients. Learn about those. I have videos on them as well. Check out my channel. Um, but lighting will affect the way your plants grow, colors that grow, as well as CO2 will change the way how your plants grow. Without CO2, they don't grow as bushy, they don't grow as full. Without nutrients, obviously your plants going to die, they're going to turn yellow or what have you. So learn those factors, those are important factors to learn. Force factors, again, this is kind of more like techniques. Learn how to trim your plants because certain ways like if you trim stems from the middle and let it grow out again, it kind of sprouts two more stems so you get a really nice bushy look that a lot of people strive to create in an aquascape. Learn how to net and wire your, um, your plants to force them to grow a certain way, kind of like bonsai. Learn how to anchor your plants, especially moths. You can anchor them on sponges and rocks and stuff to create a certain aesthetic look you know you create a little ball of moss or something like that depending where you want to place them and learn about plant placement because that is kind of important to aquascaping okay, and we'll get a little more into that in a bit here's an example by jonathan about placements of plants where do you want to place them the colors he placed all the reds on top uh, mainly for probably two factors one to get more red okay because Contrary to uh, believe, red plants get more red if you give it more intense light. Secondary is probably iron nutrients, giving it a little iron nutrients, but the main reason is usually light. Okay, where you place plants, how big they grow versus uh, how small they grow. You probably put you know the foregrounds in the front, midgrounds in the middle, talls in the back, unless you're trying to create a certain effect. Here's an example by Nick. And uh, these people are all my uh, f uh, YouTube Facebook uh, group, the Waterbox Facebook group. And I asked them to share anything that they, I could use for a presentation. Uh, this guy's uh, anchoring his moss to make this ball-like bush kind of thing going on here. It looks really cool. Uh, he has to keep it trimmed, however, to get that shape. And he might have used lit netting to let it anchor as it grows out. Those are little techniques that you will learn when you know, you're doing aquascaping. Next thing you should learn is basic visuals. Okay, and this is kind of important in a way. If you don't know what rules of thirds or the golden ratio is, I'll learn it, at least the basics of it. Because pretty sooner or later, once you figure it out, it's kind of a natural way of how we place things in the canvas. Um, you'll probably break those rules to create a certain effect. So understand these concepts, okay? After a while, it becomes natural, becomes part of your intuition, and you will change it, you will drift away from those rules to create what you need to create. Other than third, the rule of thirds and golden ratio, because those are rules for basically a 2D canvas, remember that you're also working with third dimension. you got to create depth. So learn techniques that will create depth. For example, placing an object to look like it's deeper. The tank has a lot of depth. And uh, work with how your plants are placed, foreground, midground, background. All those type of things will take an effect on how it looks three-dimensionally. The third basic vision you learn is scale and representation. Scale in a tank is kind of important. You know, you create a aquascape that looks like nature or some kind of environment 
and then you decide to put a plant in there that just has sprouting big leaves or whatever, it will kill the look of the aquascape. So learn that scale matters both for your plants and the livestock that you're going to put in your tank. Okay, so think about the size of the tank, match the size of the aquascape that you're creating, and also keep in mind the size and type of fish. Now this is an example of rule of thirds, and this is a, one of the tanks I created using these rules. Okay, rule of thirds basically goes, you want to keep your focal points within the crosses or within the lines. As you can see here on the right side, I'm building this focal point up towards the, the right side of the lines, keeping that corner, the top right corner, within that cross. These are the rules that you will learn, and again, I promise you, you will break it. The golden ratio is another rule that kind of you'll probably drift towards after you learn about the rule of thirds. Golden ratio is based on a calculation, and if you can tell, the grid looks a little different. Okay, and in this, in the rule of thirds, you, you, you see most of the focal point or the mass is in one of the corners. And in this case, it's in the top right corner. Okay, learning the golden ratio is, again, something natural. That's going to come natural to you after you learn the rule of thirds. I have a video on about the rule of thirds and the golden ratio, so that's something to check out. Okay, so again, placement of your rock. The front rock is actually the same size as the rocks in the back, but the way that I'm placing them makes it so it looks like there's depth in the tank itself. But um, basically what you do is use the, the, the length or the front to back um, spacing so you get a specific look. Okay, learn these techniques. These are things that you're going to learn when you're aquascaping. And here's some of the things. This is not a full list. Learning something like the dry start method helps you really create a carpet easy, quick, and fast. Uh, you could grind your moss and paint it on your rocks during the dry start method. You see me doing in that in the dry start method video that I made. That makes it easier to grow the moss right there on whatever you're trying to create on that hardscape. Trim the stems heavily to produce a bush type of growth. I mentioned that before. Using a frosted backing makes your depth look more extreme in your tank. It creates that space, that, that, that open space in your tank. The use of Kelvin in your lighting is something else that is actually a good trick to do. Now most of us always talk about using daylight 67 Kelvins. You see that on all the light uh, marketing and stuff. But some people do use a lower Kelvin rating to make things look more red create a uh, look of a sunset or whatever is going on in the tank and some people use a more higher Kelvin rating make things look more blue make it look more dry more desolate kind of thing so using the Kelvin temp the color temperature of the light to create a certain effect is a great technique to use sometimes less is more uh, Iwigumi tanks that's all what it's all about less is more it makes it look really good so that's another technique to think about central focal points you create a focal point right in the middle of the tank you're leaving an open space in between the left and right and we'll have to see some examples about it later uh, secondary placements of light to create an effect for example I mentioned using a white frosting background if you use like a red light or something and put it in the bottom middle of the back it'll create this sunset or sunrise look to your tank Learn about mixing the color of your plants in your tank. Create an aquascape that reaches beyond the top of your tank is another cool technique to learn. Choose complementary hardscape. Uh, this is one of the things that you will learn uh, when you're aquascaping. Learn how to use rocks, learn how to use wood, uh, learn how to use driftwood and how it complements each other in a certain aquascape. Uh, choosing the color of the substrate is another important. Some people like darker substrate, some people like lighter substrate, or some people like to mix it up depending on what kind of aquascape they're creating. And then there's off the wall techniques, some stuff that you might invent, sometimes some things that you might find out by accident. So here's an example by Lewis, the use and mix of colors in his tank, creates a very vibrant effect. Uh, this one's by Ryan, complimentary, complimenting hardscape and using beyond the top kind of technique, making the hardscape jut from above the tank itself. And another one by Ryan, and this I like this one because it's, it's the way that he's organizing the rocks, 
choosing the substrate of the coloring depending on the aquascape that he's creating what he told me here is that he's creating a kind of paludarium here he left Ma or actually algae on the rocks that he pulled in from another tank he thought it looked great so he left the algae there and building a paludarium that will actually look pretty natural this one by Brian Dunhe less is more he's just creating a focal point towards the middle right of the tank and uh, a rolling scene of the carpet uh, this one by Priscilla this is a pretty trippy tank itself it's, her use of hardscape really created this root like looking structure See, these are the uh, inspiration that you'll learn when building an aquascape and learning the techniques to create things like this. All right, here's an example by Adrian. This is a central focal point. He's creating a focal point hardscape in the middle of the tank. And it can create some really nice effect. Now, this guy's using a frosted backing. As you can tell here, it makes the tank look a little more deep. It looks a little more spacious in the background there. Okay, I have not failed. I just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Now, this is one of my favorite quotes because we're going to talk about become a master at aquascaping. Okay, practice as much as you can. Okay, so if you can't get your hands on as many tanks and try different things, because that's how you learn. And one of the things I always say, don't be afraid to fail. In fact, fail as much as you can because that's how you learn. You don't learn as much by succeeding you learn by fail about what doesn't work okay doing that will hone in your intuition and one of the things I think about becoming master is you gotta have that vision about learning about what you're gonna build and having a vision really does um, make your oxygate look better tell a story or name your concept for example this tank here I would call the jungles of Thailand because it totally reminds me of the jungle in Thailand. Symphony of colors because this tank is just full of colors. The mix of colors just makes it glorious. Forest of the Orient. This is uh, by Joey and one thing I really love about this tank is that it reminds me of all the Asian Kung Fu movies I watch. I call it the Forest of the Orient because that's where the, all the Kung Fu masters run around and pretty much kill each other. Uh, this one by me, I wanted to create a whole endless expanse of, of plants, making it look as full as possible and make it look expansive. This is a 20 gallon long. So the trick and the challenge was just to make that feel, that, that, that environment, that theme. Okay, so most important things. It's art. It's an objective. So... Don't get discouraged if someone doesn't like your work. It happens. You know, especially when you make a YouTube video, you get a lot of haters and stuff like that. Don't say bad things. This is this is your thing. Have fun with it. And that was the last point, which I spelled completely wrong. Okay, have patience with it. Just like any planet tank, you have to have patience and learn it. Find your tribe. Find friends that you can share this with. Find a group. Find um, a group online. Find people that you can hang around and talk about stuff share ideas and everything so anyone have questions anyone a question? uh, the frosting the frosting in the back basically is just kind of how you frost windows you spray it with water yeah you spray it water and then you just kind of um, scrape it scrape the water out with a credit card or something and it'll, it'll stick to the back Sue I was supposed to call you Sue sorry that's what it says here I don't know. Okay, so is that it? No more questions? Any more questions? Anyone? Yeah. The top 10 what? Oh, the top 10 beginner plants. Um, for aquascaping or just for plant tank in general? For aquascaping, go with the easy stuff. There's a lot of easy stuff out there like uh, Amazon Swords, um, Kabamba. Oh, gosh, you're going to make me talk about top 10. Java Fern. He, he's got all the answers. What else? 
Starts with weapons is a good carpet way to copy your plants. Uh, your tank. Yeah, copy your plants. Uh, Monte Carlo is the easiest to do. Yeah, it's really easy. It's low light and uh, everything like that. Yeah. All right. So no more questions. All right. Ha 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 ha. Okay. All right. So that's it. I'm Chung from the Water Box. That's it, guys. Remember, if you're not subscribed to this channel, hit that subscribe button so that you can follow more along with this series. And hit that like button if you actually like this video. Remember, guys, I love you guys. Have fun with your tanks. I will see you in the next video.